they keep on saying, says, if I could change how I was in the past, I would, but I can't. I can only take a step forward. Know that in Christ, you are forgiven. That Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and for mine. That they are taken care of. And I know that a lot of you are living with the consequences of what has happened in your past. And I, all I can tell you is that God forgives you that he is also the way out of there. And even though you may not be able to restore the relationship the way you want, you need to know that in Christ you are forgiven, that really today is a new day for you. And the one thing you can do is take a step forward in faith and know that in Christ today is that new day, and I can let his love and forgiveness shine to those around me. And maybe someday we can restore and repair those relationships in our family. That may in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we are wrapping up our series. We've done a five-week series on, um, called We Are Your Neighbor. We kicked off. That's why we have these bands the way they are. We wanted to kick off this, this emphasis that we want to connect to our neighborhood. This is our community here. We don't want to be just hiding out in our church here. We want to connect to, because there's so many people whose lives could be changed and shaped and molded and for the better by the power of God's love and mercy and is for the forgiveness of sins found in Jesus. So we want to have that opportunity. So flip the page here real quick there, Janine. We talked about three things, or five things here. We started talking about how do you hang out with neighbors and friends? Why should we show love for them? We talked about welcoming the stranger. We talked about what people think when they come into our church or when they move into a community that are new and how we can, how we can let God's love and forgiveness shine through their lives. We talked about expanding your tribe about dealing with people that you don't have anything connection with maybe cultural differences or or belief differences how do we how do we uh, engage them because we want them all to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord we also talked about helping those who are in need last week and today we talk about healing your divided family and if you want to watch these things they're all on uh, on YouTube, and if you would, if you would uh, type in Glory Day Pequot Lakes, there's going to be two. So you can either watch the whole service, but I think the really cool one, if you want to share with one of those those sermons that we did, or uh, listen to it again, there will be a sermon only. All of them have sermon only ones, right, Brian? Yeah. yeah all of them have sermon only. You can just. Uh, there's a playlist there too. Okay, very good. So you can just. To go on YouTube and that'll all be there and it'll be easy to find. And some of these are pretty valuable to, to maybe pass on to friends and neighbors. Let's turn the page. Today we're going to talk about healing your divided family. So 27% of Americans have some sort of estrangement in their, in their family. 27%. And they figure that number is pretty low because there's just a lot of people who won't, who won't, don't want to talk about it. They don't, so that's a lot. And, and, and there's a huge division now. Boomers, <laughs> I'm a, if you're, you know, I, I'm a boomer, I'm on the tail end of the boomers, but you know, um, 64 on, uh, that were 64 on down that were, that were born. Um, a lot of us are quick to accuse millennials and Gen Z types that, they're too quick to let go of our family. We think family should be stronger. And, we, and then millennials and Gen Z says, you know what? But, you know, I don't need to have a toxic environment. And there's just a lot of things we don't understand that's going on. There's a lot of things, especially since COVID happened, that people are really putting their personal happiness above family. And I, you know, some of that stuff, you, people live in really toxic environments and it's really tough to deal with and, and I can understand it. But I hate to see this division in our homes. I don't even want to take a, 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 a poll of you who are dealing with some sort of division, whether it's parent against child, child against parent, brothers against sisters, and you know how that all goes. And that cannot just be younger. It'd be some of us who are older, and we have older siblings we haven't even talked to for a long time. Because of some division, something that happened a long time ago. And there's just a really huge disconnect 
especially among people my age and people who are younger, because I remember uh, this, this week, there was, uh, I watched on Facebook, and there was a little gal that I baptized many, many moons ago, and she's a young adult, and she was talking about the Barbie movie, and she made a comment that says, the Barbie movie proves to me how bad the patriarchy has been to our nation. I go, what? <laughs> and I don't want to make fun of that. It's just that, that there is a disconnect of things that I don't understand. And we're going to explain a little bit later how I think that boomers kind of dropped the ball a little bit. We're, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But this is a tough one. So, and if you're going through this, I want you to have an open mind. And I want you to have, just, just ask God to help you fill in those voids in your life. If you don't, aren't going through this, number one, thank God that you're not going through this. And number two, how, we have to ask ourselves, how can we be supportive to families and friends that we know who are going through this. This is going to help all of us be better neighbors, not only to our own kids and grandkids and brothers and sisters, but to our family of believers here. So flip the page. I want to give you some helpful ground rules when you're dealing with a divided family. How, what are some rules that you should lay down? Number one, do things face-to-face. -face. No social media exchanges. I swear to you that the worst thing that happened to homes was social media. Because one of the things that we never do, when I say to you, you know, I disagree with you. You can't see my eyes. You can't see my, my, my whole, well, my, I'm communicating non-verbally. Can't see that. And so it's very one-dimensional. And so some people don't get nuanced. It's a lot of times with me, I'm so sarcastic and joking all the time. They're going, they, I get these texts. I said, are you mad at me? He said, no, I'm just giving you trouble. You know, and so, so you got to be very careful when you're dealing with your home, your family, your situations. Do not do it over social media. And it gets really hard because there's a lot of huge cultural issues that come up that people post about. You know, abortion, that could be transgender, it can be, it can be any number of issues that, they, that, that who should be president. Don't comment back, especially if they're your kids or your brothers or your sisters. You'll never solve anything on Facebook. You never will. It'll never, ever happen. Have I made myself clear enough? Okay. Because it does, and, and if people had been... It's been a huge, huge destroyer of homes, all right? Here's another ground rule. Clarify your goal, all right? What do I mean by that? So what is your goal in your divided family? How, how, what do you want to accomplish? You want them to see your way? Or would you rather just say, Lord, heal it? And I'm going to give you a suggestion here. What we talked about a couple weeks ago, I can't remember which one that was in, Brian, but, oh, that was in expanding your tribe. You might want to watch this video again to look at this. Belong, believe, and behave. We talked about that when we want to expand our tribe with people that are way different than us, that have different views. We don't want, and people usually join a church and they feel like they have to behave a certain way before they can come. And I think it, we said, look, we just want them to belong. And then we want to bring them along so that they would believe in Jesus Christ as Savior, and then maybe their behavior has changed. And I would suggest to all of us, especially to the boomer parents here, that may have cultural differences with their kids, work to belong. Work just to get there. To have opportunity to show God's love and forgiveness. That road will be bumpy. It won't be the easiest, it won't be the cleanest, but we gotta remember Jesus ate with sinners, didn't he? He ate with <coughs> sinners. He ate with people who were really struggling in life, and yet he wanted to be with them so that they would maybe know Jesus as Savior and that they would, they would, their, their, their lives would be transformed. 
So number two, I got one and two here. Consider, clarify your goals. Here's a hard, here's a tough one. Speak the truth in love. A lot of our differences have to go because of, of, of disagreements and, and problems and struggles that we had. They may have happened, especially if we're parents. We may have done something to them when they were little, or, or the kids may have, have a different attitude. We have to learn how to speak the truth in love. Does it mean that we forget what's going on or forget the problems or, or the struggles or the sins that we had but how do we approach that? Our goal is always to be restored by the power of Jesus' love and forgiveness. And I have one more thing I think that's really important. Click it. Read it with me. There are a lot of you, especially if you are parents, and I'm, here's where my confession is going to be, because I'm right with you. This is not an excuse, it's just how it was. I'm 62, so a lot of us knew what it was like to raise our children in a climate where everybody kind of agreed. And you've heard me talk about this before, but it was bear, bears repeating. A lot of us remember when church or this church the school the newspaper the whole society was on the pretty much the same side you know we all kind of worked together yeah there was things here and there but everybody was kind of connected together and we were on the tail end of that and a lot of times we just assumed that it would always be that way we dropped our kids off for Sunday school for the institution to teach them. We dropped our kids off at confirmation so the pastor could instruct them. We hardly ever talked about the Christian faith. Maybe some of you guys did, but I mean, I, my, both of my sisters are married to pastors and my dad was an elder. And outside of, outside of uh, uh, praying the common table prayer together, I don't know how much we talked about that. We listened to a lot of Southern gospel because my dad liked it. But it just, it was always an institutional thing. And so we never really had that connection. And in the meantime, the world went to heck in a handbasket very quickly. We saw it coming. It started coming gradually. And all of a sudden, oof, it really did. And so we don't have that connection with our kids spiritually like we should have. And so... I'm just going to, this is just on my side of it. As a boomer, to all you Gen Z and millennials, I'm sorry. And I, the only thing I can do is remember that God forgives us and that, that he restores us and that he can change our lives forever. And I think that it goes with you, not just with parents, but it can go with brother to brother, sister to brother. It can go from your kids back to your parents. There's a lot of things that go on that we wish we could change, that we wish we could take back. Um, I, I have people, friends in my family that, that, that raising almost, that they had struggles with, with substance abuse in their family, and they, they keep on saying, if I could change how I was in the past, I would, but I can't. I can only take a step forward. Know that in Christ, you are forgiven. That Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and for mine that they are taken care of. And I know that a lot of you are living with the consequences of what has happened in your past. And I, all I can tell you is that God forgives you, that he is also the way out of there. And even though you may not be able to restore the relationship the way you want, you need to know that in Christ you are forgiven, that really today is a new day for you. And the one thing you can do is take a step forward in faith and know that in Christ today is that new day, and I can let his love and forgiveness shine to those around me. And maybe someday we can restore and repair those relationships in our family. Does that make sense to you? You need to know this. You are forgiven because Jesus paid for every one of your sins on the cross. They're taken away. Today is a new day. Flip the page. Okay, I want to go through how does God heal a divided family, number one. It starts with prayer. 
Ask for it. You know, you always hear me say Matthew 7, 7 through 8. I think it's important that you actually highlight that Bible, that verse in your Bible here, that Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Ask will be given to you, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. When you ask for spiritual things, Lord, give me an opportunity to straighten out what's going on in our home. I, I, you know, to, to, to ask for forgiveness, to, 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 to deliver forgiveness or whatever it may be. Those kind of things he will always say yes. I can't guarantee how it's going to turn out because a lot of those things that have been going on in our life are for a long time. You know, there's a reason that the Bible says, um, don't let the sun go down while you're angry and don't give the devil a foothold. It's really, it's really true because those things, those past sins burden and burden. But, but you ask for it. Ask God to give you an opportunity. And then you look for that because he, it will come. He will always give you that opportunity. Next. Repentance and forgiveness. See, that goes both ways. Maybe we're the hurt party. The one thing we can pray for is, Lord, is lead us all to repentance and forgiveness. And one of the things I want to caution you about is if you're going to be reconciled to someone in your family, don't go this way. Say, well, if I hurt you, if I offend you, if you ever say if, there will be lightning bolts that are going to come at you, okay? I'm just going to let you know. They may not be real ones, but they're, don't, never, never qualify, never qualify. Just say, Lord, where I have, where I have sinned against you, I ask for forgiveness. Or tell them, tell them that they're forgiven, that God forgives your sins. And I, and then, I know that sounds pretentious, that I want you to know that in Christ, we could maybe say we're all forgiven, so let's take a new step forward in our relationship together and let God heal those wounds. But repentance, being sorry for your sin, acknowledging where you fell short, because parents, <laughs> We can do a lot of things, but kids, <laughs> we can do a lot of things. I kind of stand in the middle of all of this. Yeah. Next one. Humble Christ-infused conversations. <sighs> Always remember the goal. Remember the goal. Your goal is for them to restore your connection with your family, and we also want them to know the forgiveness of sins in Jesus. And if there's maybe some cultural differences where there's a sin in their life, that God would change them. But remember, we just we want to have an in Christ humble and humble Christ infused conversation. You don't have to beat them over the head with it, but you look for that opportunity and you let God's love and forgiveness shine through your conversations with them. Finally, restoration starting from the heart. The only way that we can restore families and divided families is starting from our heart, and it works its way out as he leads us to repentance, as he leads us to faith, and as he restores our relationships with not only God, but with one another. And I know that a lot of people, you know, there's, there's all kinds of issues in life, especially with kids that grew up with, like, alcoholic parents, or they grew up with parents that, that had uh, drug problems, or, or maybe there, there was abuse there's all kinds of things that are just cancel worthy. And yet, this is where we start. We start from the heart and work our way out. I can't promise you that if you do these things, that all of a sudden your relationships will be whole again. Because we, we do live with the consequences of actions, not only our actions, but the actions of people around us. But the one thing that we can let, let, let go is our guilt and our shame. And we can regret those things that happened either way, but we let God's love and forgiveness work in our heart to change our heart, to keep our eyes fixed on him. And we pray for that opportunity for God to restore our homes. And, and, and we know that if we could just have people to trust in Jesus as Savior, we know that one day that we'll be together again and we'll be a whole family again. I hope this is helpful for you because this is all I got for today. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the of Jesus, be through us.